Good morning. And on behalf of the leadership of Grace Family Church here in Cape Town, South Africa, it's a great opportunity for me to thank you for taking time to join us this morning as we spend some time together as a family of God, just reflecting together, worshipping together, taking a moment or two to reflect on what God is doing in our community, doing in our country, doing in the world. Right now, at the recording of this message, I, I just want to take this moment to say we are living in a lockdown in South Africa. Um, many countries around the world, cities around the world are in complete lockdown due to the coronavirus. That is the context into which we are speaking this morning. That is the context into which we are preaching this morning. It even is the context to which we are reaching out to you through this medium this morning. So thank you for taking time to come and listen to the message, to come and share a bit of time reflecting together in worship, time reflecting together as we just praise the Lord, worshiping together, reflect on some scripture, reflect on some music, using the music to join our hearts together as any um, harmony will do. My prayer is that under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, we would take this moment to come together and meet together in this very unique way. Even though many churches around the world are using new ways to just reach their communities, we thank you for taking this opportunity to just meet together with us in this way. My message this morning is a follow-on from another message which you can find right here at www.gracefamily.co.za. It is a live broadcast from CCFM done last week and the focus of that message is the character of lesion where the Lord went across across the, the body of water from the place that he had been ministering for quite a while and he went into a Gentile community to minister to a man whose life was out captive by unclean spirits and he had been traumatized all of his life. The Lord went there to save him, to deliver him, took a journey across the body of water, took his disciples with him and even a group of followers to witness something new. They went into a new community, they went into a place that they were unfamiliar with to witness an event of a life being transformed through the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we come together today, we see that the cost to that community was that the herd of, of pigs that was there and a big contributing factor to their economy was lost to the point where they asked Jesus to leave the community, to leave them alone. But the flip side of that story was that the man who had been rescued, the man who had been set free, the man who had been saved, he wanted to follow the Lord. And it is the Lord who said to him, no, you stay and you tell others in your town, tell others in your region the good news about what the Lord had done for you. As we continue with that scripture this morning, as we continue uh, with God's word this morning, we begin to take a time to reflect on what the Lord is saying to us during these times in our generation, to our people, to the, to the communities that we have to reach with the good news that God has imparted in us. My prayer this morning is as we reflect together that you would have an opportunity to see that God has got a plan for all of us. And that plan is the same because He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And He is more than able to do what He said He would do. So welcome. I trust and pray that even as we worship together, reflectively using the music, that you would take this opportunity to join hearts, join hands across the airwaves and just come together in a a spirit of unity in Jesus Christ so that we can confront what this generation is confronting and may the Lord grant us the grace to be more than overcomers in this time. Hey everybody, it's so good to be leading in worship today. Wherever you are, whoever's with you, just open your hands together as we invite the Holy Spirit to come into our homes. We may not be with each other physically, but we can all connect because the same spirit that's in each and every one of us is the same spirit that raised the Jesus from the dead. So Lord, our prayer is the same. Come Holy Spirit.
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living host. Your presence, Lord. Well, I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord and Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by Your presence, Lord Your presence Nothing worth more than could ever come close Nothing can compare, you're our living host Your presence, Lord Oh, I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere God is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God is what our hearts long for By your presence, Lord Your presence, Lord Let us become more aware of your presence Let us experience the glory of your goodness Let us become more aware of your presence Let us experience the glory of your goodness Let us become more aware of your presence Let us experience the glory of your goodness Let us become more aware of your presence Let us experience the glory of your goodness Let us become more aware of your presence Let us experience the glory of your goodness There's a table that you prepared for me In the presence of my enemies 
It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. There's a table that you've prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed. For this is how I fight my battles And I believe you've overcome And I will lift my song of praise for what you've done This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles this is how, this is how I fight my battles oh, This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is how In the valley I know that you're with me And surely your goodness and your mercy follow me now my weapon of praise and thanksgiving This is how I fight my battles And I believe you've overcome And I will lift my song of praise for what you've done And I believe you've overcome my song of praise for what you've done This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is how, Lord This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles this is how oh, oh, this is how we will fight our battles, Lord Doesn't matter where we are It only matters who we look to Yeah. Even when we're surrounded, Lord, by the enemies It's your presence that actually surrounds us, Lord It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how oh, This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is how It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you No, this morning our reflection is purely going to be on God's word and how his word is able to encourage us during our times of struggle. 
And this morning I'm going to be reading from the book of Mark in chapter 5 and from verse 21. So let me read. When Jesus had again crossed over by the boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. It's an amazing thing that he, he crossed over from one point to another and the entire journey was to reach a man. And now he had made the journey back across the lake. And when he got there, as soon as he got there, a large crowd gathered. This was the thing that had always been the story, literally, of Jesus' life. Wherever he went, the crowds gathered. Some people came just to touch him. Some people came just so that his shadow might cross him. People brought the sick wherever they went. And whoever came, by faith, they were healed. He healed the sick. He delivered. He, he healed the brokenhearted. He, he touched people's lives. And today, we are living in a time where it is difficult to go across. Because the borders around the world are being shut off. But that means we have this unique opportunity now to kind of take this message in a whole new way to those who are seeking, seeking to find the Lord, seeking to have a relationship with Him. And during this time of hopelessness, to find hope in someone who is able to deliver them. Very much like that day, people gathered. And now these people came. And they were wanting to see what Jesus was going to do. But on this particular occasion, a man came there. And he was the, a leader, a presiding officer actually, in the local synagogue. And his name was Jairus. And he came. And when he saw Jesus, he did something that no leader actually does. He knelt at his feet. You know, for a, for a presiding officer of a local synagogue, to bow at someone's feet publicly was a huge thing in the time that we are talking about. And here Jairus came and he couldn't care. He couldn't care who saw. He couldn't care what people were going to say. They, he couldn't care what, what everybody else was going to observe and what they were going to think. He simply saw an opportunity that this Jesus that he had heard about, you know, up, up to this point, they had sent many, many of their leaders to try to trap and entrap Jesus with questions. And they tried to trap him to say something wrong. But here we see something completely unique happening. Where a leader came and bowed before the Lord in a very public way. And this is the thing about being a father. When you have tried everything to help your children. When you have tried everything to help a sick person. When you have tried everything and that person's life is at stake. Then you would do whatever it takes. And here we see Jairus, a presiding officer of a local synagogue. Going to a rabbi, Jesus, the Lord, the King. Who at this stage was still in question. And but... Merely by his reputation of his ability to heal people, he bowed at his feet and he pleaded with him. Mark says, he pleaded with him earnestly. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and that she will live. And Jesus said to him, I will go with you. And he went with him and a large crowd followed them. And this was an amazing event because now they started the journey from where he had landed and all these people who had come. Jesus was moving among them. They were moving with him. They were following him. And he and Jairus were starting the journey back to Jairus' home. And Jairus was full of faith. Jairus was full of hope. And here was an opportunity for his daughter to be touched, for his daughter to be healed. And he was, he was trusting that Jesus was going to be able to do what no physician could do, what no doctor could have done for his daughter. For his daughter was 12 years old. She was 12 years old and she was dying. And for 12 years she had been struggling with this illness. And now she had come to the point where there was, there was, they had no hope. There was nothing else that they could do for her. And there are so many people in the world today living in this situation where there's nothing else that can be done in this situation. They've tried everything and Jairus was this man and when he got to this place he couldn't care what the protocol was, he couldn't care what was expected of him, he couldn't care what his position was in the community, he couldn't care. These things didn't matter. What does it matter if he gained the whole world and lost his daughter? He was determined to have his day with the Lord and now this crowd was going to witness something phenomenal. And so they started their journey back to Jairus' house and off they went. And Jesus was walking. I don't know what the conversation was like. I don't know what the disciples were talking about. There was, there was shoving, the crowd was moving, the crowd was getting bigger, the crowd was swelling. And as they were walking and suddenly 
Jesus stops. And he stops. And he says something that, that shakes everyone in that space. He says, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? And, and even his own disciples, they said, but Lord, can't you see there's a, there's a whole crowd of people pressing against you. The people are, are all trying to get a piece of you, Lord. People are coming and they're all pressing against you. And yet you ask, who touched me? But if you see what Jesus actually uh, means by the question in verse 30 of the same chapter, he says, at once Jesus had realized that power had gone out of him. So you can imagine, here was Jairus, and he's walking with Jesus, and all hope of Jesus uh, coming to save his daughter, coming to heal his daughter. And here Jesus was, standing in the sky, and instead of being urgent about getting to his house, he stops, because power had left him. And his, his hope was, oh my word, uh, won't Jesus need this power to save and heal my daughter? Won't he need the power right now? But, you know, I don't know what he was going through his mind, but Jesus stops. And there was no hurry. He stopped and he looked into the crowd and he looked at, at what was happening around him and he kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, in verse 32 says, and she came and she falls at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. Now the whole truth, you can actually read from verse 25, that she was a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. But instead of getting better, she got worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched and reached out to his, to his cloak, to his garment. And because she thought, if I touch just, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And immediately her, healing, her bleeding had stopped. And she felt that something had happened in her body, that she was free from her suffering. And she shares this story with everyone there. But the truth of the matter is many of them knew her because she was not allowed into the synagogue. Surely even Jairus knew her because you had been the one that she would have to come to to say that she had been healed. Because when you were not allowed into the synagogue because you were bleeding, you had to be okayed by the leadership of that synagogue when you were healed. And so Jairus would be familiar with this woman for 12 years. She would not have been allowed to worship in the space because of her bleeding. Because she would have been considered unclean to be in that space of worship. So here is a woman who finds herself being touched by the Lord. And Jairus is standing there, probably confused about what had just happened. He had come all this way. He had exposed himself to all these people. He had, he had put his, his faith out there. He had actually taken the, the cloak of leadership off. He had come to kneel at Jesus' feet and ask him to save his daughter because everything else that he had tried. It's an amazing thing that when his daughter was born, this woman had this issue of blood. And for the entire duration of his daughter's life, this woman had lived with this issue. But the Lord had healed her. But now power had left the Lord. And that's an amazing thing. Because here you are standing. Today was meant to be the day of his daughter's salvation. And he's a leader in the community. So surely he should have been given an opportunity. He put himself out there. He, he didn't hide the fact. He, he came and, and knelt at Jesus' feet way before this woman did. In fact, this woman didn't do it in the open. She did it amongst the crowd. She did it in a way that, that wasn't even giving glory to God because she was trying to hide what God was doing for her. And yet here was this woman healed. And he who had publicly put his faith in the Lord power had left the Lord. Was Jesus going to be able to help him? And I can just imagine the kind of hopelessness he felt in that moment. Oh my word, I had put my hope in this, this Lord. I had put my hope in Jesus. And now power has left his body and this woman has received her miracle. The miracle, the power that was meant for my daughter to be healed. And I love what Mark does as he, as he continues with the story. Because he says, while Jesus was still speaking, while, while Jesus had, had, had still come out of all this, while he was still talking, um, some people, some servants from Jairus' house came. And they said, your daughter is dead. Don't bother the teacher anymore. I don't know 
what Jairus felt in that moment. But as the story unfolds here in Mark, we see a woman being touched by Jesus, being healed of a condition that she had carried for 12 years. And a 12-year-old girl had died because Jesus hadn't got to her house in time. Could it be that the delay in healing this woman would actually be the reason why she died? Could it be that the timing was all out and this man must have lost all hope in that moment? He probably felt like he had put all his trust in the Lord Jesus. He had put all his trust in the Lord's ability to save his daughter. And now here, in this moment, this woman gets his miracle. But Jesus is not limited by time, nor is he limited by space. He's not limited by the circumstances of this man's life. He is actually the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He was there in the beginning. He'll be in the end. He's not limited by these things. And he comes and he realizes, he says to him, don't be afraid. Just keep believing. So he says to Peter, James, and John, who is the brother of James, and he says to them, come with me. Follow me. And when they came to the house, Jairus' house, Jesus saw that there was a great commotion going on. People were crying. People were wailing. And he went in and said to him, Why is all this commotion going on? And why all this wailing? Why all this sobbing and crying? The child is not dead. She's asleep. But, but this community, um, they understood death. They understood when someone had died. They had a, a culture that when someone died in their community, they would go and they would, they would spend time grieving with them, wailing with them, crying with them. And they would even be professional wailers and crier, as we see in many villages in Africa. There are people who will go, they will go to funerals, and they will wail, and they will cry, and they will come to confirm the death. They would come to honor the dead. And there's the culture, this, this honor culture that Jesus found himself in. And they laughed at him as if, you don't know what you're talking about. How can you actually say that the girl is just asleep? But he put them all out. He says, put them all out. And he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who came with him. That was Peter, James and John. And he went in. And he went into where the child was. And he took her by the hand. And he held her hand in his and said, Talita kum. Which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. And immediately, the girl awoke, stood up, and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. She had just died. And the Lord had come there. And whilst people were still wailing and crying and all that, at this, the people in the room, they were completely completely astonished at what they saw and Jesus said to them don't tell anybody about what you had seen here today give the girl something to eat no I don't know if you can relate to Jairus' story it's not just that Jairus got to see the Lord raise his daughter from the dead it's not just that Jairus had put himself there and put his faith in the Lord but he had to wait the appointed time I don't believe that Jesus didn't know what was going on. I don't believe that there was just by chance that he stopped to check who had touched his mouth. I believe he was being intentional from beginning to end. Because there are people, they are expecting the Lord to do things in their time. They are expecting God to do things their way. There are people, when they trust, they put their trust completely in the Lord. They do it, they do it publicly, they do it without any uh, cons consideration of what other people think. They will go there, they will have great faith. But it's not dependent on your faith. God will work in His time. He will not be hurried. He will not be rushed. He is fully aware of what He needs to do and when He needs to do it. So He takes His time with the woman who had the issue of blood and He gets to the girl in time so that her father can see the man that He had put all His faith in was able to raise the dead. He had seen the Lord carry out his mandate because Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection. 
And the power that Jesus had wasn't just for this lifetime. The power that he has is for every lifetime. And till the end of this age, he says, if you continue and remain in me and my word remains in you, you will find that I will be there with you till the end of this age. And when this age comes to an end, I will come and receive you so that where I am, you will also be. So Jairus had a life-changing experience that day. As the presiding officer of the local synagogue, he had experienced the Lord. He had, had experienced the resurrection. He had experienced the life giver. He had experienced the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And now his life could never be the same again. You know, I once in one of my preachings and teachings shared with our church that when a person's name is written in scripture, it's usually because they were um, contactable. So when Mark put Jairus' name in the scripture, you could go and verify this story. Today, it's thousands of years later that we are still telling the story of Jairus and how the Lord came to his rescue, how the Lord came to save his daughter. And even though there was an intervention of another miracle, Jesus had more than enough. The power that had left his body was not gone forever, for he was all-powerful. He is a God who is able to do things that man cannot comprehend. So this morning, as you reflect on what Jesus is doing in our time, in this generation, during this time, in this generation today, you need to ask yourself, what are you and who are you going to put your faith in? Who do you trust this morning? Have you been waiting long? Have you been praying and asking the Lord to intervene? Has it appeared as if others are receiving their miracles before you? Does it look like all hope is gone? Does it look like you are desperate for an intervention of the Lord in your life? I want to say to you this morning, the Lord is on time. And even when He appears late, you can bet on this one thing. You can, you can take this one thing and you can put all your trust in it. He is never too late. He is always able to do what He has promised He would do. He is the healer. He is the one who comes to heal. He is the one who comes to save. What is your situation this morning? Are you feeling hopeless? Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling exhausted? Are you tired of, of calling on the name of the Lord? Does it feel like everybody else is in front of the queue? Understand today, when Jesus comes to you, to intervene in your situation, he will do a complete work. He will do a complete work. And you will find yourself not needing to do a single thing because he is a God who is true to his word. He is able to do what he said. Stronger than the power of the grave And constant in the trial and the change This one thing remains This one thing remains love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. Cause on and on and on and on it goes It overwhelms and satisfies my soul Now I never ever have to be afraid This one thing remains This one thing Remains Your love 
never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love Oh, my debt is paid And there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love Cause your love never fails, it never gives up it never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Your love Oh, your love never fails Your love never fails, it never gives up it never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Your love